Well, um, moving on to subsection A6 on page 8, line 30 through page 9, line 18. This was formerly on page 8, lines 18 through 20. Um, former subsection A6, A, big A, and big B were deleted. Um, these subsections specify that the commissioner must provide in the major anadromous uh, permit draft assessment a determination of whether an activity's adverse effects could be prevented or minimized under D, which has been deleted, and or were likely to cause substantial damage under E. And both D and E were deleted in the current draft, and I will get on to that in a moment. Um, in their place, new subsections little a, 6, uh, big A, uh, I, and 2I, and 6B, um, I, and 2I were inserted on page 9, lines 1 through 18. Um, these new subsection, uh, subsections contain the commissioner's initial determination that a permit may or may not be issued based on whether an activity's adverse effects can be prevented or if the effects may be minimized to the extent necessary to protect anadromous fish and anadromous fish habitat or the affected habitat can be restored to the extent necessary to protect anadromous fish and anadromous fish habitat, or if the effects of the activity can be otherwise mitigated to the extent necessary to protect anadromous and anadromous fish habitat. And again, this will be part of his an initial draft assessment. And we put this in there so that ultimately, and I would like to say that, that this draft assessment um, and the final determination is something that the commissioner has to put in writing and has to explain his reasonings why he came to the determination. Now, with the language in the bill the way it is, that's going to be put out for public comment. It's going to be scrutinized, and people will have an ability to comment on his reasoning and ultimately challenge that uh, the issuance of, of a permit based on that. So one of, the, one of the main things that's left in this bill that we view as very potent and very um, in line with the Board of Fisheries request and in line with what we think Alaskans want is notification of, of a permit, the ability in a major permit to, um, to comment on the specifications on the commissioner's determination of whether something does or does not protect anadromous fish and the habitat. And then and ultimately, if people disagree, they have the ability to challenge and ask for reconsideration of that determination, and ultimately, um, it, if they completely disagree with it, have an avenue to pursue that in court. And it. Representative Nimmer. Yeah, I was just waiting for him to finish. I think he's pretty much wrapped up there uh, because that's that statute. You know, you can always take any statute to civil court. Uh, that pretty much applies to everything that we do. But Matt, is there a is there a structure? You know, whether we're talking a mining industry or the commercial fishing industry, industries in the state, they want to know what the rules are. So when we're allowing this to happen now, with the, the commissioner can may or may not make the decisions. Is there a, a structure? Or is there trigger points on when they're making the initial draft assessment? So it could go from one commissioner to the next commissioner on how this looked at. Is there basic guidelines on what they should be looking at or following when they're doing this procedure? Or is, that, is there a structure set up? Is there, is there have been? Or it sounds to me like there should be if there's not, because or else how would you know what the rules are? Um, you know, so when are, when, I guess when a commissioner is making these determination, is there specific things that they have to look at to make a determination? Or is there a structure to this? Through the chair, Representative Newman, um, in current statute, there's no structure at all. There is a, basically a line that just says the commissioner shall issue a permit it, unless the plans and specifications are insufficient for the proper protection of fishing game. In practice, they have a very well established structure. They they will look at a project. They'll look at uh, the the scope of the activity, the duration, uh, all the different plans and specifications, and then they try to prevent the adverse effects. First, then they try to <coughs> minimize those adverse effects first, and and if they cannot be prevented, um, even if they're minimized, they still require uh, mitigation and restoration, or mitigation or restoration. Um, so they, in practice, ADFNG does have an established a structure for dealing with this. It's a very thorough one, but there's nothing currently in statute. As far as your question to if the bill has that structure, it, it does. It, it actually lays out, I'll get to that later on in the bill, but first you have the consideration of the effects and it lays down specific criteria um, that the commissioner must look at. It, it, it's not 100% prescriptive, but then later on in the bill it also has, it codifies the process by which mitigation measures must be taken. So, and it, and it 
also states later in the bill in that mitigation section that um, that the mitigations must be um, implemented in a way that prevents or minimizes, and then also that it must be implemented in a way that is that is geared towards the protection of fish. Um, and I, I will say that one of the things we tried to get away from in this draft was being overly prescriptive, um, because as was the problem that we saw with the last draft, was in the attempt to be too prescriptive, we had a lot of unintended consequences on different industries, on simple development, on placing culverts, on on uh, municipal wastewater discharges, on um, you know, road construction, and, and a variety of other things. And it, it seemed no matter which way we tweak things, there was always those unintended consequences. So there, there is more discretion in this draft to the commissioner, as, as to your point. But it does lay out a structure, and, and a, trans, a very transparent one, by which the commissioner must come to these determinations, must post them, hold public comment. Uh, so there is uh, quite a bit of accountability in place. Short follow up. Follow up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, Matt, you talked about how this being in statute, there's not in statute, and obviously things like this are probably better in regulation uh, because it's always evolving. There's always things changing. So a lot of this stuff is generally covered for regulation changes. So changes in regulations where the public has a talk, regulation changes, you know, go out for public comments and how this is. So uh, is this, is there kind of thought of, is there a thought behind this to produce the regulations that would go around this? Or, and Madam Chair, we can go into this later if you'd like, but uh, these are just, I think, very important questions on the structure of how this is going to be put together and making sure that all players know what the rules are. Okay. We, we will include it in our further discussions. 